hill, because uh, you have a hill in the, in the, you've got to have that. And one part of it, they go up and they go around the, the, the uh, Busby, the stand, the guy who's the head guy, you know, the idol, the loved by uh, the, um, um, Manchester United. Yeah. Right beside their stadium. And they had to run past and go back and, ah, oh, the crowds that were there were just unbelievable. And, uh, Mate, you had um, you every, everybody pumped. You're on you're on my show during the uh, Gold Coast games, and I, got, I think we just won our fourth gold fourth gold medal. And I got you on air, air here on this radio, and you you had me pumped, and the listeners I had back then, you you know, you were there live and right there up and close at the games, and it was like I was there next to you, mate. The way it was, we just won our fourth or fifth gold medal, it was, and yet you, you had me pumped in the studio. I can tell you. Well, at the, the end of the day, you, you've got to remember, um, um, as you, you said before, like you know, amateurs and, and uh, pros, I mean, you, you get into a Commonwealth Games or an Olympic Games, and the thing about boxing, let, let's, let's, let's think of this. Think about this. Swimming, you can come fourth or fifth in a, in a, in a heat and still make the final. And in boxing, um, there's a draw. Your name goes in a hat. And you should draw the, the world champion or whatever straight away. And you get into, um, in some sports, whether it be Commonwealth Games or Olympics, they're as good as you're going to get. Yeah. You run in a marathon at a Commonwealth Games and you're against the Africans, that's as good as the running mm. in an Olympic. Same with boxing. Sure. I mean, the only difference probably is there's no Cubans or Americans in the, uh, in the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> but, you know, there's some pretty good... Uh, Pretty good. I mean, I just had the great pleasure of watching um, one fight after each other in 1978 in, a, in, a, in what was a, an ice skating ring turned into a boxing venue in two finals, one after another. And you're not going to believe this, but was uh, was uh, um, 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 a, a Zuma Nelson. Wow. And the next fight was Barry McGuigan. Yeah, wow, two greats. Two absolute greats that went on to become a superstars, and I mean that—that's my point. Is that it, 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 you just don't know um, who's going to come out of that. Yeah, well. I mean, the guy that beat me at the—sorry, uh, I beat at the Moscow Olympics. Mm. Uh, his name was Ancelet Wamba. Yeah. From the Congo. Well, he went on to win and hold the IBF uh, cruiserweight championship for ten years. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it's you just don't know where who uh, these boxers are. Yeah. Okay. And, and you got to remember, boxing um, has been in every sport, every Olympic Games. It sure has. It started. Okay. Why didn't Ben Pike turn professional back in your day? Oh, uh, n- not 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 good enough. And um, what do you mean, not good enough? You're a oh, bloody well, good not amateur. Good enough because you... I it would, well, wouldn't have had the time. Uh, my family were involved in, in uh, development of real estate and stuff like that. And okay. we, we, um, I sort of went into that level. Then I sort of lost interest in that pretty quickly. And, 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 and I, um, I wanted to get involved in, as, as a commentator. And, and, yeah. uh, and I got started doing that. And, you, and you do a damn, damn good job, mate. So you've been involved in commentating pretty much since you get boxing away? Oh, uh, yeah, pretty well. Yeah. yeah pretty well. You know, yeah. But, 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 you know, but... I mean, there's, there's nothing better than being... Um, I worked for Paul BC in Brisbane, uh, and they were the sports station. And and uh, our music... Uh, sorry, our um, uh, main uh, uh, breakfast announcer was the manager of Wally Lewis. And uh, so I had no problem in getting interviews during that early yeah. period of the 80s at the State of Origin. I mean, and wow, how good a, how good a, how good a night, nights were they out? God, that would that'd be great, wouldn't it? Jeez. Yeah, it was, it was it was it was good fun, and I mean, and I know Paul. We, we used to put boxing on at the Broncos Leagues Club, well, and you came up and that's and a fir- fought there yourself. Yeah, that's the first time I ever met you. I knew you had something to do with the Queensland State of Origin team. I'll just tell the viewers out there how I met Benny Pike. I just fought Marcus Prelo as a a young kid. I thought I got robbed. I thought I beat him. I'm on, I'm on a little phone booth at the reception desk. Oh, I got robbed. I'm talking to my older brother David. Mate, they robbed me here and you all pass laughing. Oh, mate, you're in Queensland, mate, and you got to knock them out, and you just laughed and kept walking. Good fight, though, mate, and you kept walking. That's how I met you. <laughs> I remember well, it well. Yeah, but, but, but you see, that's what 
amateur boxing's got to do today. Mm -hmm. They've got to get back to doing that, having tournaments, pre-arranged tournaments, proper tournaments on a regular well, we, basis. Well, we did one with the league. Um, we picked the New South Wales league side and went up and fought a Queensland ABA side. They did everything in their power to stop it right up until the evening, but we, we got it done. Mm. We got yeah, it well, done. There you go, it's got in the way again, Benny. I beg your pardon? There you go, it's yeah. got in the way of that one again soon, too. There you go. No, look, it's, a, it, 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 it's just... It, it, look, I give, I, give, I give boxing people just a bit of ammunition. I mean, we should be ashamed of ourselves. I, yep. We, we do not have an Olympic Games gold medalist in we, boxing. We went very close, but not good enough. We've gone close tw Twice. Twice. And, and, and we, we, we do not... And the reason I bring it up is because New Zealand does. Mm -hmm. They have a gold medal winner. Now, if that's not enough to inspire you, I don't know what is. Yeah. Ted Morgan, 1928, won the gold medal for New Zealand. Now, we've gone twice. And, of course, Snowy Baker, I mean, I don't know if listeners, your listeners are aware, but the, the, the contact with Snowy Baker, and I mean, how important roles boxing has played. Snowy Baker came back from um, winning a silver medal at the at those Olympics mm -hmm. um, those many years ago. 1928, did you say? No, that was Morgan. Yeah. He may have been 24, but um, he was around that era. Yeah. Uh, but he also, on that, at those games, he competed in two other mm. sports. He did too. He competed in rugby and swimming. Yeah. He was that. But when he came back to Australia, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but when the Jack Johnson, um, Tommy Burns fight was put on a rush cutter's bay by uh, the great Hugh McIntyre, mm -hmm. that fight went on, created history, whatever. Hugh McIntyre, years later, did two great things. One, his wife was the... Uh, head of um, New South Wales Swimming. They wanted to take some women to the swimming because they weren't allowed at the time. They wanted, they had to have a chaperone. So Hugh McIntosh went and raised some money. He was the John Singleton of his day, raised some money, and they flew Fanny Jura on a ship over to... Um, and she won the gold medal. So there was women swimming. But the other point that he did was he got involved with um, Snowy Baker and they set up and John Wren, and they set up Festival Hall, um, you know, in Sydney, Roscoe mm -hmm. Bay. Wow. And think of all the entertainers and singers and musicians and whatever that have come through Australia and have sung or whatever, been at at that time at um, either Festival Hall, Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Yeah. Hmm. It's a wonderful legacy, isn't it? It sure is. Now, before we go, Ben, um, I'm just going to read out some quotes some from your teammates back in them Kings Cups days and World Cups days. Uh, Paul Moore, he put down, you're a great bloke and a great talker. You might not get a word in Paul Nazari today, he said. He's, oh, a, oh. he's a cheeky bugger, isn't he? But we've done well. I saw him fight. <laughs> he, he was a main event fight in Yumea many years ago. He yeah. beat the French champion. He's a terrific fighter. He said he went on the world stages. He was not tall for his weight. He was behind the eight ball right from the opening bell, but he did bloody darn well, and he went he went great with the best world amateur fighters you could ever see. That's a big rap, isn't it? Terry Archer? Yeah, well, yeah, that's very nice. That's very kind, and uh, and, and, and I wasn't... Uh, you know, I was right. Well, when they when they first brought the rankings out of amateur boxing, yeah. that was done from about 1978 onwards. Was it? Yeah. Because well. that was where they had a world championship. Yeah, so you right. could start listing and, and you know, putting boxes in order. You'd have yeah. the gold medal winners. They'd be number one or number two, of course. Yeah. And uh, and you'd go down that list. And, and I was in the top ten, oh dear, wow. for, uh, for 1978 through to about 1982, 83. Jeez, Ben, you're a good bloody amateur fighter, mate, I've got to tell you. I can well, Ryan Fink was there as well. Yeah. Phil McElwain was there early as yeah. well. Yeah, right. Terry Archer said, what a, of you, Terry Archer, he was on the show over a month ago. What a gentleman Benny Pike was. He was so experienced in boxing and trips away. Him and Tinky were the most decorated amateurs in Oz. Pikey light heavyweight. Um, did you get a silver medal in, 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 against a German in the USSR games? 
No, 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 no. I, I beat the Russian you beat in, the... Um, in in Bangkok. Where I won, and oh, I okay. got a, a silver because I ended up with a cut eye in the, yeah. in the third fight. Hit, like guy head butted me, and the referee, I couldn't believe it. I just stepped back. I went, well, out. What about that? And the referee went, oh. So he took me to the doctor, <laughs> and as the doctor got up, he was shaking his head no before he even looked at me. Oh God! Oh God! Red Hot, there's so much corruption in there in the Olympics, Benny, and you would have seen a fair bit of it. Well, in corruption, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than the Roy Jones fight. And uh, when uh, when he uh, finished that fight, oh, I've said this many, many times, we called that fight, sat there, and he could have got out the ring, had a coffee, chatted the girl <laughs> up on the front door, <laughs> and still got back in the ring and won the fight. Yeah, God. He was that far in front. Yeah. And, uh, and and but to his credit, he didn't put on a performance, not yeah. like the, the they had done a couple of nights earlier when one of their fighters got beat and uh, uh, two two of their their uh, corner men got in and punched the referee. Um, that was terrible. And yeah. then their boxer sat in the in the in the ring and wouldn't get out. Yeah, jeez. So luckily, at that time, uh, the those Olympics '88, they had two rings going at the same time. Was that was that the 1980 USSR Olympics? 1980 was in Moscow. Was in Moscow, yeah. And only you and Norm Stevens went. Norm Normie Stevens went because of a boycott. Yeah, Normie was terrific, and yeah. uh, he he was he was. Uh, well, I thought he won it, and um, and that he, he you know, went against him, but it was a terrific fight, and Normie was very classy, and and there's a young boy from Innisfail in North Queensland. He just decided he wanted to go to the Olympic Games and he moved to Brisbane, started training in Sandgate Boxing Gym and then went on to went on to, 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 to where he went. And um, he's very proud of his Olympic Games. I saw him a year ago, he turned 60. Yeah. And he still had his Olympic blazer on. He was fantastic. Yeah, how good's that? Mate, we might uh, call it a day there, Benny, and um, get Renato Cornette on. Thank you so much for coming on Radio 2 BACR, mate. Well, Renato was another in that group in the early 80s that uh, we did some fundraising for and we started that stuff at the Broncos and Renato, Renato was in, in that group with, uh, with uh, Shane Knox yeah. and, uh, and a couple of others. But, uh, and he's a terrific fighter too. He was in the 84 Olympic team with Jeff Fennick and, uh, and Shane Knox and he, Rick Finch. So. He was a good amateur and a good pro, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, terrific. terrific. Yeah. And, and, and that's my point, that we've got so much talent. Yeah. So much talent there, and and, uh, and whether they're short, uh, tall, skinny, thin, whatever, everybody does their best, uh, and that's what's good thing about boxing. I mean, um, you do your best, and you shake your opponent's hand, and you live to fight another day. Yeah, I love it, don't you? Win, lose, or draw, we shake hands before and after the fight. It's great. Well, thank you, Benny Pike, for coming on the show, mate. You're a diehard Queenslander, and you're good for boxing, buddy. What well, a great I am a cream. diehard Queenslander. I know mate, you are. I must say, on behalf of all the boxing fraternity, thank you for giving our sport the opportunity of, uh, of um, airing the, the personalities and the sport. We appreciate it. I thank you for that. Uh, thanks a lot, Ben. You know, I'll talk to you soon, Benny. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. Pleasure, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye. Ben. And that was Benny Point. What a, what a great character.